Hello, everybody. Hey, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Dog Life Radio, episode 17. Thank you, I am doing very well. <laughs> uh, today I have a conversation teed up with professional strongman Thomas Wren, all the way from Australia. So this is a long distance chat. <laughs> we had a lot of fun trying to sync up too. Uh, not only the 14 hour time difference, but everything else you can imagine trying to get this one on the books. And I am really glad it did. Um, things didn't always sync up the way we wanted to, but we eventually did connect and uh, it worked out awesome. This turned out not only to be an interview with the 2017 ASA National Heavyweight Champion from Australia, but also one hell of a nice guy. Um, this, this one was truly a pleasure. And Thomas, hopefully you're listening. I will be staying in touch and uh, I hope to have you on again in the future as you continue your strongman journey. Um, like I said earlier this week, uh, he did have a competition. He was competing in Australia's Strongest Man. Uh, I think that was October 2nd and 3rd. Uh, he came in 6th, which is pretty damn good uh, for a guy still new to the sport. And overall, pretty damn good. Like I said, this is just the beginning of his journey. Can't wait to see where his path takes him. So show the man some love, people. Follow him on Instagram at Thomas Wren. That's W-R-E-N, Thomas Wren. Um, and just uh, a couple of items before we turn the turn the conversation loose thanks for supporting the show remember to follow me on instagram at dog life radio youtube facebook all at dog life radio uh yes we have a new handle on instagram it is now dog life radio i think i said that uh remember to like and follow uh, i'm also on twitter but i really don't use that one too too much but uh, the last ask I have for you is to not only keep listening, but help me spread the word. So share the links on whatever social media that you prefer. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple iTunes, the podcast store, whatever. Uh, follow it in Stitcher, Podbean. We are now on Google Play, so follow us there. Overcast, Undercast, Pocket Cast, whatever. Uh, subscribe, follow, spread the word. Also drop me five-star rating. That is the best way for new listeners to find me. Um, I would love to hear from you too. Feedback is always welcome. Dogliferadio at yahoo.com. And with that, on with the show. All right, we are recording. This is us. This is Dog Life Radio. And uh, my name is Rossi Jujo. I am on the line with Thomas Wren, all the way from. Well, the other side of the world for me uh, in Australia. Thomas, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good, Rossi. How are you, mate? I am doing great. Thanks again for taking the time uh, to, to join us here at Dog Life Radio. Uh, so for those of uh, the listeners right now who don't know who Thomas is, Thomas is an Australian strongman, uh, recently competing in the Australian Strongman Alliance. Um, I think that was back in July. Am I, am I off on that? Yeah, July July second, mate. And, uh, yeah. Fortunately, fortunately, you had the blessings to win that event. Yes, I saw. Fantastic! You were the uh, you were the only one to get the axle overhead, being able to complete that event. Yeah. Well, it, it came down to the end of the day. It was such a tight competition during the day. Uh, at, at the end, it came down to who had enough energy to lift it, <laughs> and, and and luckily, uh, I was able to. Another another competitor. I was able to lift it, but then failed. So, you know, it was uh, luck, of the, uh, basically luck at the end, and, and uh, that got me over. That's awesome. And you are on your quest to become Australia's strongest man. Yeah, I have uh, the actual Australia's strongest man contest in three weeks. Awesome, awesome! I can't wait to can't wait to keep tabs on that one. Now we uh, we have been trying to connect for a number of weeks now, and you know the the easiest thing that we were trying to overcome, I think, was just the time and the date uh, difference between uh, East Coast. Uh, I'm in Connecticut, Connecticut of uh, the United States. Um, but some of the other issues that we were kind of working through were just like everyday life, work life balance between working. Uh, Kids, uh, so you you've got a couple of kids yourself. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, two stepchildren and, and one of my own. Awesome, that's awesome. Um, so let's talk a little bit about balancing spending time with the kids, spending time at work, and actually being able to train. How, how do you manage to uh, to balance that stuff out? Well, the honest, the honest truth is that the, the the balance somewhere one of them suffers. Mm -hmm. So whichever one 
uh, you decide to focus on sort of overrides the other one for a bit. And, it, you know, when, when I first started Strongman, uh, I, I found out that I spent a little bit too much time uh, focusing on that and, and quite honestly my family life suffered so um, and so did work so you know sport sporting careers um, take up a lot of time and luckily I have a, a very forgiving and loving partner you, you know I got to tell you a lot of it does come down to that because not not uh, all of us are, are fortunate enough to be able to be like some of these massive names in the sport that their full-time job is to train for strongman or or some of the other people that i speak to are crossfit or different mixed martial arts as well so uh, it's, it makes it that much more difficult when you're carrying the load of both things yeah that's right mm. oh man so so how long have you been in the game of strongman uh, uh, six months six months uh, uh, I've I've always done, always uh, uh, off and on lifted weights, mm -hmm. um, and I played high level rugby union yeah. um, uh, as a, a younger man, and then uh, uh, work life took over, and um, the the uh, unfortunately I, I I couldn't live the the physical life I wanted to and work at the same time, so I gave it up and. And then became incredibly fat. And um, uh, after many years, and a doctor telling me that uh, you know you're not doing too well, I decided to get back into weights in um, October last year, um, and decided to do strongman. In I've always wanted to do strongman, but finally bit the bullet, and uh, my first competition was in May. That's it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Now. I know uh, I follow you on Instagram, and I've been following a bit of your, your transformation. Um, you've been shifting, or I, I shouldn't say shifting, I should should ask it. Are, are you shifting to more of a keto type of a diet? You're looking to shed a little bit of the extra weight um, to, to, to optimize yourself in, in Strongman? Yeah, well, I've, I've been doing like cyclic, it's cyclical keto mm -hmm. um, for two, almost two months now. Uh, and, and I've probably shifted about 20 kilos of fat uh, um, wow. and gained, mus gained muscle in, in, in the meantime as well. I, I started, when I started keto, I was at 165 kilos, so 360 pounds, something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and now I'm down to 150 kilos um, and, and feel fantastic. Like life has become easier. Uh, well, I got to tell you, you're looking really good in the training pics and videos too. Well, I'm hoping to lose another five before um, comp in three weeks, which is uh, the lightest I will have been in uh, probably four or five years. So, <laughs> um, and and I'll feel better for it. I think I think it's it, it's certainly um, made me feel better about life. Um, I, unfortunately. Um, I have suffered from depression because of my weight, mm -hmm. and now that I'm getting on top of it, I feel much, much better and more confident in life. So, you know, it's, it's a good thing all around. It's great for your health, and it's good for your mental well-being as well. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, I know there's so many people that have, um, you know, this, this body dysmorphia where either, you know, no matter what they look like, they're, they don't feel good about it. Um, bouts of, of depression like uh, of that nature are just so massively serious and it's fantastic to hear that there's something that you can do yourself where you're, you're just shifting your diet and it sounds like you're having some really positive results yeah I would I would suggest to most people to at least give it a try it, it's incredibly difficult to stick to mm -hmm. uh, and the beginning is painful um, just... and that that's 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 the hard part is the beginning. The first four weeks, I would say, were, the, were very stressful and, and, and quite difficult. But once you get past that, that first month mm -hmm. and then you really see the change in your body and, and yourself, um, just, from, just from the food change. Um, uh, the only thing that I found is, is trying to get the high levels of fats. I've had to try and, and find the best sources of fat, so like olive oil and flaxseed oil, so there's no saturated fats. Yep. Um, because being a bigger person, uh, I have had problems with cholesterol, and saturated fats, 
just skyrocketed my cholesterol. Oh yeah. So so you were saying you were doing a cyclical ap- approach to your uh, your keto diet. What what type of a cycle are you looking at? You you would try to get into a state of ketosis and stay there for a few days. Um, what what type of a cycle there? It, yeah. So uh, essentially, well, we've tried it, and and so far it hasn't been the best. Um, well, we're trying five days straight keto, mm-hmm. and then on Saturdays. Um, and Sundays having carbs, but the problem with that is, is I feel much better on on just pure ketosis. Uh, and as soon as I have carbs, I just I, I feel lethargic. And, and I think for me, actually staying on on straight ketosis is, is going to be the better thing. That's so, phenomenal. You know, we, my 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 diet coach and both my strength coach uh, suggested the carbs, but we were going to carb load two days before for the competition uh, so that I have massive energy energy reserves. But it seems to be the opposite effect for me at the moment. So uh, we're, we've got to tweak the diet a bit, and then um, we've got three weeks to, to do it. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how we go. I could fall flat on my face, so I could be really good. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, it sounds like it, it from, you know, I'm not a nutritional expert, but I, I have uh, done enough research anyway to know that ketosis, carb loading, off on cycling is all dependent upon the kind, the person that you are, uh, because whatever works for me may not work for you at all. And it sounds like you're approaching it from a, a really logical perspective of trying things out and moving into it. And the thing that's amazing um is the fact that you're 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 competing in strongman, so you are lifting some massive massive weights, and you're going to it, and you're telling me, I feel much better without the carbs, without doing the carb loading. For, for, on my personal opinion, uh, uh, people that say you you can't do this sort of stuff without carbs haven't tried it. Yeah, um, and everybody is different, so. Uh, I'm I'm not a fan of these 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 online dieting and and coaches that that aren't with you mm-hmm. and see how you're going uh, with their diet because there is no one size fits all approach to anything. So you know it can it can also depend on your blood type because depending on your blood type means you can it you can and can't eat certain foods. Mm-hmm. So. It, it's completely dependent on on who you are as a person, uh, and and one size fits all. It may work in the interim, and you might get quick results fast, but you won't be able to stick to it because there'll be uh, an underlying issue that will stop you becoming the best you can be. Yeah, absolutely. I, I got to tell you, one of the biggest challenges that I have in my own, I, I try to do a cyclical approach as well. Like I try to get on for a couple of days of ketosis and I don't do a ton of carb loading because I'm not, I'm not in a competition state, but I, I, brutal honesty. The tough part for me is I've got a couple of kids in the house and the kids got kids food and sometimes that kids food makes its way into my mouth. And man, is that tough to avoid? Uh, my, uh, my weakness is chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> The kids love it. So, like, uh, m- m- my diet, I've also completely uh, dropped dairy. Oh, really? Um, yeah, like, that's a big thing for me. Um, da- dairy is, uh, modern day dairy is not actually that great for you. Um, it's been pasteurized so many times that, you know, it's, it's it affects how you think, it affects your mood. So, uh, there is a, a, a a, a train of thought that well, well it's actually some of it's been proven that um, milk now passes straight through the wall of your stomach and actually affects how you think no. so the chemicals inside milk are straight through the wall of your stomach straight past your brain barrier and actually affect your mood so the less milk you have the better it is wow that's incredible now would the same thing be like applicable to different uh, other forms of dairy like cheeses uh, I think cheeses uh, from from my understanding so far, I think cheeses are okay. I, I love cheese, and I don't feel any bad on cheese. I don't feel bad on cheese, but I, I actually have felt my mood change. I used to drink the whole old school thought of being strong is drink five liters of milk. Oh yeah, um, yeah. To get your get your calories up, and as soon as I stop drinking huge amounts of milk, I do actually feel a lot clearer in my head. I still eat cheese. Um, I don't think I'll ever go past Brie and, and, and 
some cheddar, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, certainly, I certainly don't drink the milk anymore. I know the feeling on that one. That's definitely cheese. Yeah. And I, I got to tell you, the part one of my weaknesses is pizza. I just got it's tough to stay away, but oh, wow. uh, that's a rough one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but you can, you can try and find uh, low carb pizza bases, mate, and then it's all yours. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I've tried, yeah. I got to tell you, I've tried a couple of different things like. Oh God! What was it? Ca- uh, cauliflower crust and yeah, yeah, well, I, not good. I saw that and thought to myself, it's not worth trying. No, it <laughs> isn't. Oh my God! I spent so much time. Oh, Thomas, I was prepping that, and it was just like this, and it tasted like crap. It was like, forget it. It's not worth it. Not worth it. I'll load myself up on other things. I'll have a steak with a side of avocado and some vegetables. <laughs> I saw a, a, a video on it, and, and when I saw them squeezing the juices out, I went, no, nah, that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work that hard for it? No, no. <laughs> no, 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 that's it. So, look, it, 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 it certainly depends on, on who you are as a person and, and also how willing you are to, to use your willpower to not, not break. I have had certainly had moments of weakness, and I'll, I, mean, I have to admit that to my, my, um, my coaches. Mm-hmm. And... and if you hide it from the people who are training you, they'll eventually find out because their programs work and you're not where you should be. So, you know, you have to be honest with yourself and honest with people who, who are helping you. So, you know, it is, it's, as I always, always post and say, it's, it's a team effort. It's not just doing me. I, all I was gifted with was was big legs, a big ass, and be able to lift things. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's there's only so much I can do. So surround yourself with people that have done more than you mm-hmm. because they can take you where they've been. Yeah, very, very so, true. you know, it is always a team effort, and, I, and at the moment I have a great team around me, so... That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so what does a typical day look like for you in terms of diet? Like when you wake up, do you what, what are you eating and throughout the day? Um, I, I have prep meals, which are essentially uh, no carbs, um, like mince meats and diced chicken with vegetables. And I'll I'll try and eat an avocado with just about every meal. It's expensive, but. Mm. I try and eat an avocado with every meal. I have nuts, and I, I drink as much flaxseed oil or olive oil as I can mm-hmm. to try and get the fats up. Um, so I'll have three or four of those meals a day. For breakfast, I'll usually have um, protein bread, which is low-carb, high-protein. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's peanut butter, um, just, to, just to get the huge amount of fat. Um, and you, you don't skimp on the peanuts. Right? You just slop them on Uh, um, and then all my vitamins in the morning um, then we'll go through and have three three four meals during the day Um, go to training at night you know in afternoon night Um, I might eat again after that depending how I feel but straight after that I have um, a protein shake but I have it's called no well the product I use is no way and it's made from beef collagen uh, so there's no wet, no no dairy, um, and it's it's a very good source of protein. Very and good. then I'll have before bed I'll have one or two tubs of of uh, natural yogurt, mm-hmm. um, and that's about it. Oof, there you go. It's a, a lot of a well, lot of eating. Yeah, well, you know, you're not a small guy, you know. Uh, what what you were saying, you mentioned you took vitamins, so like multivitamins. Are you doing uh, any other supplements? You mentioned protein powder, any uh, creatine, any anything along those lines. Well, I, I haven't been using creatine lately, um, so I, I don't take multivitamins because um, mm-hmm. most of the multivitamins you get um, from from pharmacies or online, they actually just they're not that good. They're a waste of money. So. I take things like uh, uh, B B six. It's it's for flushing out uh, cholesterol. Um, lots of fish oil. Um, uh, it, there's a couple of different ones. I, I use a, a, a vitamin called Relora, which is like an anti-stress vitamin um, to bring down my cortisol. Um, I use melatonin at night to sleep. Oh, that's uh, fantastic! That is fantastic. Uh, I just started that myself uh, about a month ago. Unbelievable. Mm. Mm, you sleep well. So uh, cinnamon bark, uh, HT, 
is called HTP5, which is for cognitive abilities. Um, yeah, just a bunch of different stuff to help help certain things. Things go. I don't just, I don't take vitamins. You should be getting enough vitamins in in what you're eating. But I do take vitamin D, but not in tablet form, in liquid form, because you rarely absorb sun, uh, vitamin D from the sun. It, it, uh, it, it, when people say, "Oh, I go outside enough," I got proved that was wrong because <laughs> I used to say that. And now uh, my, I'm out in the sun every day, yeah. but my di- my vitamin D levels were non-existent. No kidding. Mm. No kidding. No, yeah, they, they were almost at, at zero. That's a- and the doctors the doctors like go out and have some sun. And then I, I went and spoke to my my um, uh, my diet coach, and he laughed, handed me the vitamin D, and said, "There's only a certain time in summer." And it's like a specific period of the day where you can absorb any vitamin D. That's unbelievable. So, oh my God. That's, <laughs> and everybody say you go outside, get a get your vitamin D and don't go out too much because you don't want too much of it, you know? Uh, well, I, I'm out in the sun every single day uh, as I work as a builder and mm-hmm. uh, my, my levels were zero. Wow. Wow. So, so, you, so you're, you're taking additional in a liquid form there. In liquid form, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And to get it back up, I take quite a bit. So to get it back up to, to, mm-hmm. to uh, running levels. So uh, my potassium levels were quite... When, well, I wasn't absorbing potassium and, 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 and dealing with it properly because my vitamin D levels were non-existent. Mm-hmm. So everything, everything's in balance. So if, if one's out, everything's out. Yep, I believe it. So, so... It, it, takes, it takes a lot to get... You know, I, I have um, I, I do blood tests every three to three months, so just to make sure everything's everything's running right. Otherwise, you sort of, you know, shooting in, in into the sky and hoping to hit something. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, you know, I, I heard, uh, heard some stuff from a, a podcast up here. I think it, it may have been Mike Dolce. Or he may have had Rob Wolf on. Some guys that are uh, very huge into the nutritional scene and uh, also to. Uh, keto and, and, and primal paleo and so forth. And they were saying the exact same thing about getting your blood work done. Uh, if you haven't, you should at a minimum uh, twice a year, but every three months is, is optimal just to really yeah. be able to say, what, what are you aiming at? You need to start baselining and tracking towards things. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, And you can't get it every two months or, or, or six weeks because you, if you see something wrong, it takes you 12 weeks to even start changing it. Mm-hmm. So you can't just go, oh, I'll do this now and then get it done in a month because your body hasn't even started going in the right direction. Yep, yep, absolutely. Because we're not talking about small markers like, hey, you need to drop, uh, you know, maybe five pounds or something like that. You're you're talking about your 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 baseline levels of everything. I, I know when I had mine done, you know, they're testing everything from your thyroid, pituitary, all of the levels uh, of everything. You know, you get a book back of your results. Mm, that's exactly right. Mm. So you know, it's it, especially things like um, you know, it, it, you know, for for larger males that have high fat, your estrogen levels are going to be through the roof, mm-hmm. and they shouldn't be because they need they, as a male they need to be low. So you're not going to have the strength. You're not going to lose the fat. You know, people don't people don't even re- register that they've got to check their progesterone levels. So you know, that's 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 an, another hormone that you need in the right levels to be able to to achieve what you want to achieve so you know it's it, it, there's a fine line and, and you need to know that line so you, you have to have everything everything getting checked and as I said before you need you need the right team around if you're going to take this professionally and, and as I'm trying to turn to become a professional athlete mm-hmm. it, you have to have a solid team around you that supports you and, and and has similar goals to you and wants you to see wants to see you achieve yours. Absolutely, I, I see, and I, I'm getting at it myself from the space of a guy who's uh, north of forty, and things start to change a little bit within the body, and there's just a, there's a huge need to kind of keep an eye on all of the the levels of of everything that you're mentioning as you begin to age, and especially if you want to age well and you would like to st- maintain active as you move into your mid to late 40s and into 50s mm, yeah that's exactly mm. right and if you've got a problem with with uh with hair loss check your progesterone levels 
Padres. <laughs> no, okay. Well, I gotta tell. I've been. Sha- around, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to check because I've been shaving my head for so long. I, I don't, but I don't know if I could even grow it back anymore. <laughs> I, I, uh, I started shaving my head because I was. I am heading that way. Um, and um, one thing my partner said is stop shaving your head. So yeah. <laughs> I, now have to, I now have to live live with a receding hairline just because my wife doesn't like bald heads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't have the best shaped head, um, and from years of rugby and and, uh, and contact sports is covered in scars. So I think that's what she doesn't like: the fact that <laughs> I have like a square head with scars all over it. So ah, um, she gets to see know, it's a bit lumped up. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So you know. I know. Yeah, that's it's what you do. My my kids did the same thing with the uh, with the goatee. It was uh, don't shave the goatee because you don't look like daddy. And it's all right. <laughs> got to keep the goatee, yeah. no matter how gray it gets. I got to keep it. <laughs> yeah, I keep I keep my beard on because when I shave it off, I look like a fourteen year old. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I was aiming at that, going, you know what? I, I'm if I shave the beard, I'll look I look younger. So I'm going to do it. But the kid, oh, the kids don't like it. So it's you know I got to keep it on for a little while. <laughs> the things we do, yeah, right? That's, that's that's fair enough. You know, it it fair is. Enough. It's a little thing. I'll, I'm okay. <laughs> I'll live. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone that has children knows that uh, if you don't do what they want, uh, it's not worth living. <laughs> so, Absolutely, you got to pick and choose the battles. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So what? My father told me that uh, most of the time it's better just to say yes. Sure, you can you can do whatever you want, and then when it's something really important, that's when you fight. So you know, if it's nothing, if it's nothing that's that's really important, then don't worry about the fight because you'll just you will just use your energy for nothing. <laughs> that's absolutely it. It's so it's so much like like professional sports. It's like you have to be strategic. You only have so yeah. much energy left in the tank, and it's like. I could fight to win this battle, but I'm not going to win the contest on this event right now. So I'm going to let them exactly win it. Right. I'm going to let them win it. Well, and that, <laughs> that's exactly like me when it comes to yoke, because I know already that is my worst event. So all I do is just try and not fail, and then I come back afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seemed like you did really well in your past event in the uh, in the stones as well. Yeah, the, the natural stones were, were, were good. Um, I see... Uh, when I come to a comp, when I, all my competitions so far, I've only ever lifted the events half a dozen times. Mm-hmm. So I'm still finding a technique. So bringing in a coach has helped me uh, considerably with with positioning and, and um, breathing and and um, how to actually lift these events properly. So coming from a powerlifting background and bodybuilding background um, when I was younger. Um, you know, it's it's pretty simple. Like there are different techniques and different ways to to put your body in position to lift. But lifting the strongman events is a completely different uh, kettle of fish. So I would suggest that any strongman can become a power lifter. And not every powerlifter can become a strongman. It's a different game, a uh, completely different game. Oh, absolutely! If you're going to deadlift 500 pounds with with a Olympic bar, it's going to be the exact same feel, the exact same balance, no matter where you are. You know, you know whatever yeah. contest it is. But if you're going to have to pick up a you know a stone that's 200, 300, 400, whatever, however big the stone is, it all depends on how it's shaped. There's no handles on it. That's exactly right. Well, I I, um, I thought you know I could pick up a yoke and 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 do all that. And the first time I did it, snapped me in half. Yeah. So you know I, I thought I was strong until I started strongman. Ah, that's amazing. And, and it, it it basically said to me, you're not that strong. Um, time for you to go work on on the events. And and the, the first time I did Atlas stones, I couldn't walk the next day. Oh really. I gotta tell you, yeah. that, that's one of my favorites as a as a as a fan of strongman. Atlas stones are so cool to watch. Yeah, uh, uh, all, all my all my adductors and hip flexors just said, "Well, we've never been worked before. Um, <laughs> you know, we've, we've never been worked like that before. You're gonna go sit down for another two days." So um, yeah, I, it was it was a, a, a rude awakening and a big shock. So. Um, 
you know, I, I love the sport and I'm going to continue it and, and see how far I can go. That's um, awesome. I'd love, love to make the world stage and, and you know, I've, I've got the best team around me and, and we'll get as far as we can. Well, well, I definitely will be keeping an eye on you from, uh, well, from, from afar anyway. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, I, pre- I appreciate the support and, and, and uh, I thought for me personally, I'm like when I'm around people, I am probably extroverted, but then when it comes to social media, extremely introverted. Yeah. And, and putting myself on show with social media has been difficult for me uh, because naturally, you know, I, I may be a, uh, I may be open and friendly to to people around me, but to the greater public, it's it's really difficult because it's uh, most people, especially myself, are quite shy when it comes to huge huge amounts of people. Uh, and you know, there have been a couple of people that have tried to have a go, but you know. Most of the people I've found have been really supportive, and and it's a really good thing. Like, uh, you know, it's sort of, you know, made me want to work harder on it, which is good, and and become more open. Um, so, you know, it's it's meeting people like yourself via social media is a fantastic thing. So, you know, it's a great way to network across the world. Otherwise, you would never have done this. Yeah, you know? absolutely. 15, Fifteen years ago. 15 years ago, we would never have thought it was possible to do this. Yeah, absolutely. It was amazing. When I was telling people that, you know, at the party, I'm like, I got to get going. I have, a, I have an interview uh, with, with a, a strong man, <clears throat> excuse me, a strong man competitor from, from Australia. And they're like, what? How did you, how did you even meet him? How did you, how did you line him up to be on the interview? And I said, it was all through social media. You know, you start liking the same things that you like. You see this, you know, just, you know, shot in the dark. I mean, reach out and say, hey man, I think it would be cool to have you on the show. The fact that you're, uh, you know, you train strong, man, that's incredibly interesting to me. I love that. The fact that you're doing this ketosis type of a diet and finding some success, that's incredibly interesting to me. Uh, one of the last guys I had on was a, um, a guy who is a CrossFit athlete, uh, brown belt on, uh, in, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, mixed martial arts kind of a guy, and into that type of a lifestyle as well. And I'm like, it's, you're finding relevant spaces all over the country and all over the world. And the fact that we could connect, to me, it was phenomenal. This is, I mean, there's no way I'm going to pass up a conversation like this. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, it, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible what, what we can do now. Um, you know, uh, uh, you couldn't, you can't imagine how, you know, if we, if we went back to ourselves 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and went, this is what you're going to be doing, and you're going to be able to have conversations with like-minded people across the world, share your opinions, share what you're doing, uh, and have a community that supports each other when you've never met each other. Yeah, absolutely. Never uh, and, never heard and, your and we, voice. Nothing. That's yeah. exactly right. And, and build a fan base and, and build a following and build a community that just transcends what you could ever have imagined before. And you've got people that have, people have different knowledge and, and, and experiences that you can, you can, you can lend their knowledge in, in a matter of buttons. Yeah. So, you know, you might see something in one of my videos and go, I've come across that problem before. Here's the answer. Yep. Ab- absolutely. And, and, and and, and no one else in in your community before would have been able to give you the answer. This is fantastic. When when you approached me and said I'd like to do a Skype call, I, I had butterflies. Like this is fantastic. I'm 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 you know I, I'm I'm getting recognition and I get to talk to someone who is like minded, and who's across the globe. And you know one day we might actually be able to 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 meet at an event. You know. It, it's, yeah. it's it's incredible, like absolutely incredible. Absolutely, and, and so, yeah. Social media is a wonderful thing, wonderful thing. I, I um, you know, I, I I waste a bit of time on it, and, and in the beginning, I wasted too much time. Like we we're talking about the life balance thing. Yep. So when I first started social media, I was far too in, in, involved in it, mm-hmm. and once again, I, I neglected my partner and my children, and then. I was shown that I was doing that, and then now I do what I have to do, answer a few questions, and then put my phone down. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's 
it's an incredible tool once you understand it and and, and see your weaknesses with it and and your strengths. So you know, I oh, I think this is a fantastic opportunity, and and you know, people that listen to your podcast, you know, might find some sort of inspiration from this, and you know, follow follow on on our journeys, and uh, it's great, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was um, when once we had uh, kind of locked things up that we were gonna nail down a date and do this. I started putting some feelers out to uh, some some different uh, groups that I uh, belong with, and I got a lot of positive feedback that they could not wait to hear the uh, hear the episode. So you know, this one uh, today's the ninth of September, at least here in in. in um, Connecticut it'll take me a little bit to get the get everything done and it should be up in a couple of weeks and uh, uh, I know there will be a strong strong support here in the states to listen to this to hear about what you're doing how you're doing it I still have a couple more questions for you if you have a little more time too just because everything is so interesting the way that you're approaching strongman I mean everything from the the shedding some of this weight um, your diet is incredibly different to me and I think it's awesome H- how are you feeling with with all of that happening how are you feeling that impacting y- your weights like what type of weights are you starting to throw around knowing you're shedding some of this this body fat and adding on some uh, some, some muscle I haven't lost any 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 power um, which is the, which is the 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 most important thing. I've probably gained some in some areas, mm-hmm. um, and certainly plateaued in others. Um, you know, it being heavier means you've got more. Your leverages change, so you have more assistance when you're lifting because you've got more mass. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. losing the weight. <laughs> We we had a th- we had an idea that you know you drop twenty kilos you put twenty kilos on the bar. If you were to do that with a with drop twenty kilos in a in a calorie deficit diet and the traditional way of losing weight, which is not losing fat, it's losing weight. Mm-hmm. Um, you couldn't do it. You you go into the calorie deficit and your weights just collapse. You're not going to be lifting until you drop the weights and then bring it back up again. So with this ketosis diet, I seem getting a past the first month, that was I felt like I was weak and um, you know, I didn't feel good. But then when I passed that I was back to where I was, which is great. And I'd already lost ten kilos. So, hmm. you know, it, <laughs> I, I feel that you know if I'd stayed doing what I was doing before, yes, I might be stronger. I probably would be stronger. But would I be as healthy? And that, and the answer is no. Um, and that's the most important thing because, in the end, you know, I, I do want to do this for my life. I want to, you know, I have I certainly have different dreams and aspirations and. Being being part of the strongman community and being a professional strongman is one of them, but in the end, being there for my family is the most important thing. And you know, being unwell and and unhealthy, yes, you might be strong, but you know, I, I had a one in ten chance of having a heart attack, and I'm 28. Yeah, so, that's crazy. You know, when I got told that, and the doctor said to me, you know. In the next five years, there's a ten percent chance you're going to have a heart attack. And she said, oh, oh, "You're 28. That's not right." And I had to sit back and went, "You know, things are going to change. Like, I don't care about the weights. I care about my kids." Yep. So, you know, but thankfully, with finding this ketosis diet and and changing my view on 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 eating, I've been able to become healthier, lose the weights, and still stay as strong. Um, you know, I, I found losing weight, my cores actually got better. So, you know, um, I look fat. Um, personally, I, I would do the, the Homer Simpson thing where you stand in the mirror and then do, do ch- chest pops. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for, for, for the first time in my life, I'm seeing definition. And, and you know, that's the wonderful thing. The thing is that I know that dieting properly, it may take me longer to get, the results that I want physically, but I'm okay with that because my personal life isn't impacted. So, you know, people have got to understand that there are more important things, you know, when, sorry, there are more important things than, than, you know, winning a world title. 
you, you can have as many world titles as you want, but in the end of the day, you come home and you ain't got no family. Yep. So no, for me, true. my most important thing is my partner and my children. And if I can, if Strongman works for me, and and I hope it does, and I, I really want it to, um, then that's fantastic. But I will not sacrifice my life for for this. You know, people say, oh, you've got to you've got to be able to willing to sacrifice everything to be the best. That's a, that's false. That's yeah. absolutely false, you know, and and it's important to understand that in the beginning, you know, I, I thought about, you know, the costs of, of being a, a professional athlete and mm -hmm. wanting to become a professional athlete and you're willing to do it. And quite frankly, you don't have to give up anything to be a professional athlete. You just have to have the right plan in, in place yeah. and, and, the, and the right steps to do it. Yeah, it might take you a couple of years longer, but be happy with the fact that you're still heading in that direction, and you'll get there. If it's meant to be, you're going to get there. If it's not meant to be, you're not. So, you know, it's more important that I get to see my son every morning and and my daughter and, and my wife, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy. So, you know, there's, there's, there's better things in life than, than trophies, and... You know, I have a few trophies now, which is fantastic. I actually gave my Nationals trophy to my father. Oh, that's got to um, be an awesome feeling. Because he <laughs> is my biggest supporter, always has been, um, uh, and my closest friend. So, you know, I, I thought to, to me, I went, you know what, he, he was there with me on the day. And yeah. I haven't won any competitions and until he was there. The only time I've ever placed and ever won anything was when he was there. So I thought, you know, he came up with me, to, he, he, he got on the plane with me at four in the morning, we flew to the event, and then it all just went right, and it came home, and then as a present I gave him, I gave him the trophy, um, and it's now with him on his mantelpiece, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy that, that he, he's incredibly proud of, of, of me and how far I've come. And, you know, I see, all the success in the world is nothing if you've got nothing, to sh no one to share it with. So, you know, that's that's the most important thing. So Yeah, absolutely. I, could, I couldn't agree more. It's, you know, you, you, you see um, the sacrifice, you see some, de you know, athletes or, or celebrities or whatever, and if they come home to that empty house, you know, it's uh, was was it really truly worth it? You know, and then you see you see uh, Eddie uh, Eddie Hall. He you know he wins World's Strongest Man this year, and he's a, he's a guy that uh, you know has to pack in a tremendous amount of calories to get that body and that frame. And I, I thought I remember hearing reading something along the lines that he said if he ever won one, he would then kind of go back to a better weight for him because. Keep keeping his body at uh, I, I don't know where he was. I think he was like got to be close to the. It was he was two hundred kilos, so yeah. four hundred and forty pounds. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say he had to be a four. Yeah, so a guy his size keeping four hundred plus pounds on his frame, it was no good for his body at all. The heart. Well, he he, re the, he retired from World's Strongest Man. Yeah, there you go. He's not gonna he's not gonna compete again. So he just so, did it to win it, and he did it yeah. to win it, and he uh, essentially I think his doctor said the same thing to me. Uh, and same thing as what mine said to me is you can't physically keep this weight on I could get to 200 kilos just like him but mm -hmm. I am going to die if I stay there so people like people like Brian Shaw and Hafthor who are 7 foot yeah. can be 200 <laughs> kilos if you look at if you look at Zadrunov Savickas yeah. he is now dropped to 175 and he is shredded oh yeah absolutely like he, he is shredded he looks unreal the way, the, and he's 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 not a spring chicken. I mean, like he's uh he's up no. there with me in age. <laughs> he's forty one. Yeah. Okay. So I'm older than him. <laughs> but yeah, he's he looks phenomenal. Like dropping all that yeah. weight. Um, to to your point, he's sacrificing a little. You know, maybe a little bit in that mass piece. But uh, he's he's still big Z, and he is he can move mountains still. He will be back. So he had to lose the weight, but he is rebuilding. So this year he's even stronger than he was last year. Yep. His, his himself now would beat himself who competed in World Strongest. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He... By, 
by miles. He is in he is in top shape, and they're all dropping the fat. Every single strong man now is dropping the fat. Terry Holland's dropping the fat. He looks Hathor's great. Dropping the, yeah, Hathor's dropping the fat. Mark mm-hmm. Felix has always been always been not a fat guy. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian's dropping the fat. Every and you got people like Martin Lissus who are only 140 kilos coming in and mixing it with the big guys and showing everybody that you don't have to be huge to be strong. M- Marius Marius was the the poster child for this. He mm-hmm. he had that bodybuilder's body. He was insanely fast and insanely strong, but he didn't have to have. 200 kilos and 40% body fat to be strong. Yep. It, it, it's it, it, it's a whole whole idea of people going, you have to be big and fat and you have to eat all this food and you have to have huge calorie to be able to be strong is false. Yeah. Like, it's absolutely false. Uh, look at Eric Lillybridge and and Larry Wheels from powerlifting and, and a lot of powerlifters, apart from like the, the top heavyweights. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're 175 kilos and they're incredibly fat. But then you've got guys who are 150 kilos who aren't far off them in weight and in strength. And they don't have much fat on them. And, you know, there will be guys who are shredded and doing the 500 pound, 500 kilo lifts. You know, it's, it's just a matter of time and evolution. The whole idea and, and, and understanding of, of nutrition. The whole idea of, of having to be super fat and supremely overweight to be strong is wrong. And, and it, it's damaged a lot of lives and a lot of health. And this and ketosis, I, I hope it gets pushed a lot more because, you know, it, it's, it's an incredible diet and, and I'm enjoying it. Um, it's hard to stick to. Um, but, you know, look at Mark Bell. Oh, yeah, he's who, a great example. Who, who's, he he is he is the pusher of ketosis. He is insanely strong and looks fantastic. Oh, absolutely! And it's so, funny how he got into this space. You know these these guys who uh, you know you're you're. you're in the health conscious space and you're in the health or fitness industry and then um, all of a sudden once you get exposed to it it's like the light comes on in the room that you thought you could see in but all of a sudden you can see everything now Mark Bell is an yeah. awesome example I think Joe Rogan was another example I, I'm not sure if you're yeah. from you know he's one of the same you know. uh, Joe, Joe's in, in incredible shape oh yeah and it's and, like and these are older guys yeah they're, they're, they're middle aged middle aged men yeah they're not. They're uh-huh. not in their prime from a professional athlete perspective. I think. I think uh-huh. a ton of it, but you know, with the ketosis and the high fat diets, helps with everything in the body and the joints. And it just seems like it is. It is a weightlifter, powerlifter, Olympic strongman kind of a thing that would make perfect sense. And it when, when I saw what you were doing, it just was like, man, I got to talk to this guy. This is incredibly interesting stuff. The, the, the only thing I would stress to people is. Good fats. Oh yeah. No sa- yeah. Keep your satura- saturated fats to a minimum. Like the, we, I started using coconut oil and MCT oil, mm-hmm. and they're 100 percent saturated fat. Mm-hmm. And once realizing that, I went, "Well, oh, that's silly. Let's not do that anymore. Let's go. Let's go to sources of fat that are better for you." So you know, yes, a little bit of MCT oil here and there in your protein shakes is fine. Uh, coconut oil is fine. But if you're using that as the main source of fat, you're going to have problems. So you need to need to, to balance it and, and do things correctly, and you will get amazing results. Yeah, the balance, that balance, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, it's it's all it's a big circle. It's the balance, balance yeah. between the work life balance, the balance with you know your your family and, and your your training and nutrition is the same thing. Why any different? That's, that's exactly right. That's so cool. Exactly. Right. Oh man, so. I don't want to keep you too much longer. I know you're going. You have to go into work today. But before we go, I wanted to ask you a, a last thing of if there was anything that you wanted to promote. I know I follow you on Instagram at Thomas Wren W R E N. So I, I encourage people to follow you there. Is there any other social media? Any sponsors? Anything you want to promote or uh, or get out there for anybody? The, the only people that I that I have at the moment are my diet coach, which is Body Beyond, um, in 
in Penrith. They have a few stores around, uh, and their Instagram is Body Beyond. That's it, Body Beyond Belief. That's the, that's the actual business. And uh, Stan Stan Turex, um, my coach, and he's also the the, the founder of Body Beyond. Uh, and Stephen Keeley uh, from Be Strong uh, uh, Training is. My, my strength coach they're both on Instagram Be Strong Training is on, on Instagram and um, Body Beyond Arts is on Instagram as well um, other than that it's, it's just me and my family uh, at the moment I, I don't have any other major sponsors um, you know that's that comes with, with winning bigger events um, so but we'll get there it's, Absolutely. it's a work in progress um, and you know Six months has been pretty quick, and I think uh, if I was to uh, uh, win Australia's Strongest Man within six months, I think that's an incredible achievement, um, and uh, I would be absolutely uh, uh, stoked that that's that's happened. Um, and you know what? If not, it's a great learning curve, and I'm going to learn a lot more for future strongman events and come back stronger. So. No, oh, that's fantastic. That's I am sure we, you've got big things ahead of you. I know I will be in touch with you for sure, but I absolutely appreciate you taking the time to come and talk with me. That's been my pleasure. Hey, all right, people. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. I had a blast talking with Thomas. Um, like I said, show him some love on Instagram at Thomas Wren. That's a T H. Thomas <laughs> dot Ren W R E N. Enjoy it. Have fun, people. Love, peace.